All right, same as before, but let's see what happens when we have the greater than case. Rewrite the problem. Set up your positive, negative cases. So 2x plus 8 is greater than or equal to 6. Subtract 8 from both sides. That means that 2x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Divide by 2. And x is greater than or equal to negative 1. I went through that quickly because I think um, this part's pretty straightforward. Let's plug in negative 1 and make sure we're okay. 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2. Add 8, you get a positive 6. And let's think of 0. 0 is bigger than negative 1. 2 times 0 is nothing. Plus 8 is 8 is greater than or equal to 6. So let's look at the negative case. Same as before. Negative. Parentheses. 2x plus 8. But then we're going to multiply both sides by a negative 1. And in doing so, change the direction of the inequality sign and uh, make sure we don't leave out anything in our steps there. Subtracting 8 from both sides gives us 2x is less than or equal to negative 14. Divide by 2, x is less than or equal to negative 7. And when I look at this, pan on up, give myself a little bit of room, the temptation is to try to write this in one line of math to where you're like, well, negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to negative 7. But if this was a number line, this order would be wrong. Um, you know what's greater than negative 1? 0. But 0 is not less than negative 7. So I'm not sure that this will work out to where we can write in one line of math. So let's set up our number line. going from like negative 5 up, excuse me, negative 10 to negative 5 to 0, 4 in between, and then we're going to have a closed circle at negative 1. We'll graph the first one first. Here's a closed circle at negative 1. And I'm going to shade to the right because that is going to be moving to the right for forever. And then I'm going to move on to my other line now. x is less than or equal to negative 7. So here's the negative 7 closed circle and that's heading over in this direction. Now this is not going to be able to overlap with each other so as we look at this we're going to have 0 as a possible, possible answer and negative 1 million as a possible answer. So this is kind of a kind of exceptional and that's because of the direction in which this faces. Now each of these problems you're not going to be thinking about that when you do these when they're presented all together. So just figure them out and be sure to always graph the number line if you're unsure the direction in which it should face. I think I'll do just two more unless this ends up being a, a no solution one. Whoops. Okay, now here's the deal. We have an absolute value, and we're figuring out that an absolute value has to be greater than negative 4. Well, you might be wanting to say, well, it's got to be no solution, because in the no solution ones, we ended up having these all end up being uh, the negative ones on the right. Well, let's think about it, though. This is now saying it's greater than. So let's bring up a number that's greater than negative 4. Well, 0 is greater than negative 4, and really any positive number is greater than negative 4. So this is going to be y is all the real numbers. Or you could also say there's infinite solutions. Now I'm going to show you something in red real quick so you don't have to write this down. Now I think this would probably complicate things, but I thought it might be interesting. Here's um, negative 3 halves. So this is an or condition, so it would go forever in that direction. Here's less than or equal to 5 halves. So, I mean, as long as it's either way, it'll end up being infinite solutions. Now, if that's helpful, go ahead and pause this and, like, look at it longer. But if it's not, just uh, try to reason through it like I did on the first explanation. Make 3 an OEO problem. When this video is at about 5 minutes, I'm going to put the uh, answer up. 
Okay, I'll hover on this screen for a moment for you to check the math. Maybe this is one area you might have made a mistake. And then I'm going to scroll to where you can see my number line. Now here's the thing. Zero is not an available input. Because it's unavailable, it should fail when I plug it back in. So here's 2 times 0 is nothing, plus 1 is 1, and 1, when you take the absolute value, is not greater than 7. So that agrees with um, what I'm thinking. So I can try a, in a, a value that will fail to confirm that uh, I think I'm right. Now let's try a very large number like a million plugged in. 2 times a million ends up being a very large positive number which must be greater than 7. And we can also try like something huge, like negative 1 million way over here, which makes this value very negative and very far to the left on a number line. And then when I take the positive value because of the absolute value, I get a very large positive value, which is definitely greater than 7. Now, number 4, we'll treat that as an OYO problem. And with it being OYO, you can either check it on Wolfram Alpha or uh, have faith in yourself. We'll stop this video here.